Thank you for joining us for our June Q&A talk. I am tonight's host, Q&A Talks Program Coordinator, Cody mcclay Cullum. My personal pronouns are he, him, but if you're feeling bold, please feel free to address me with my preferred pronoun, the royal we. Q&A Talks connect rural parents and caregivers of LGBTQIA plus youth with the resources they need to ensure their children can grow up safely and authentically. Q&A Talks is an initiative of Project Q&A and is made possible by grants from the Independent Area Community Trust and the American Library Association's Libraries Transform Community, focus on rural and small library grants in partnership with the Independence Public Library. Tonight, we are delighted to have Paige Olson. Paige Olson, she, her, is a mother of three kids from Allen County, Kansas. Having experienced poverty and food insecurity, Paige believes food is a right. She works with Southeast Kansas residents to use their voting power to create better food access policies and laws. Prior to working at Kansas Appleseed, Paige helped establish a local soup kitchen, advocated locally for affordable utilities and more. Please welcome Paige Olson. Hi, um, yes, so uh, my name is Paige Olson. My pronouns are she, her. I am the integrated voter engagement ad advocate at Kansas Appleseed. Um, this position is new to me starting um, on Monday, but um, I have been with Kansas Appleseed since December of 2021. So um, in that time, I have also worked on um, Acts of Tax campaign, which I worked on earlier this year. Um, I helped run um, two different run for office events um, also earlier this year. And then uh, last um, election, I, I worked on um, a bunch of get out the vote campaigns. So the work isn't necessarily new to me, just to the title. Um, so a little bit about who Kansas Appleseed is, and it's just very brief. Our mission is that we believe Kansans working together can build a state full of thriving, inclusive, and just communities. Um, we work across the state um, with uh, advocates and staff across the state. Um, I'm going off script, so I'm a little um, off. So what we're talking about is voting rights today and the importance of being an informed voter. So I might speed through this. So please stop me and, or stop and ask questions if need be um, or clarifications. Um, I might not have all the answers, but I, uh, I can always follow up and get the answers to you if I don't have them. So first of all is... Um, it's Kansas law to be able to vote. So Kansans have to be registered to vote in the county where they live in order for their vote to be counted. Um, ballots cast in any county other than where the voter lives and is registered will not be counted for any candidate, even statewide or national candidates. Um, voters who come to vote in person without an acceptable photo ID can still vo vote a provisional ballot, but must provide the county election office a copy of their ID before the county canvas so their vote can count. And then mail ballots, Mailed ballots will be counted if postmarked by election day and received by the county election office by the Friday following the election. So um, be aware that post offices may not postmark mail arriving late in the afternoon um, for that day and not all mail is postmarked. So kind of plan accordingly when voting. Um, voting before election day in person. So vote early in person starting 20 days maximum or seven days minimum at the discretion of the county. So you'll check your county election office website or call for hours and locations. And it's important to take your government issued photo ID and knowledge of your candidates when you go. Um, so early in person and already received mail-in ballots are generally the first votes tallied and available after polls close. So those are the first ones that you're seeing whenever um, votes are coming in on the day of. So I'm gonna go into photo ID requirements real quick because um, it's on my presentation of things to talk about. Um, but uh, so state law requires Kansas voters to show photogenic, I did photographic, not photogenic. It does not have to be photogenic. I'm very clear, mine isn't. So um, to show photographic identification when casting a vote in person, the following documents may be used to meet your photo ID requirements uh, for voting. So a driver's license or ID, uh, ID card issued by Kansas or another state, your US passport, military ID, ID card issued uh, by a Native American tribe, um, employee badge or ID issued by a government office, student ID card from an accredited post-secondary education institution in Kansas, 
concealed carry license issued by Kansas or another state, public assistant ID card issued by a government office. So an exemption from photo ID requirements exists for permanent advanced voters, voters with illness or disabilities, military and overseas voters and their spouses and dependents, voters with religious objections who sign a declaration of religious objection, voters age 65 or older may use an expired photo ID. So then turning in an advanced ballot, this was something um, during the um, during the primary vote of last year, um, I did some phone banking and that was mostly around turning in an advanced ballot. And I know there's a lot of confusion on, um, on how that works. Um, so if you get a mail-in ballot and you forget to mail it back in, you can tur turn it in at a, uh, at a drop box. So secure ballot drop boxes are generally available at the county election office and sometimes in additional locations in the county. Um, they're a way to ensure that your ballot reaches the election office and are not delayed by mail service. Um, you can also turn it in at any, you can turn your ballot in at any uh, voting site. I've lost words. Um, so, and other people can deliver your ballots as well. So voters can ask other people to deliver their mailed ballot either to a postal box, a ballot drop box, or to a polling location. That's the word I was looking for. Um, there is no signature required for the person delivering the ballot, and there are no signature lines for a person who's helping to fill out the ballot or for the person who signs for the voter due to the voter being unable to sign for themselves. Uh, or there are signature ballots. I think I said there are no. There are signature lines for a person who is helping to fill out. So anyway, let's talk about our voter rights. So whether you choose to vote by mail or at your polling place, you have rights when casting your vote. So here are a few things to keep in mind if you cast your ballot in person. If the polls close while you're in line, stay in line, you can still vote. And it's very important. And you'll hear that every election is if you're in line, stay in line. Under federal law, you have the right to receive help at the polls if you are a voter with a disability or have difficulty reading or writing in English. Um, if an election worker can't find your name on the list of registered voters, you are still entitled to a provisional ba ballot. So still ask for one. And if you experience voter intimidation, which is a federal crime, such as aggressive questioning about your citizenship status, criminal record, or voting record, you can report it to the nonpartisan election uh, protection hotline. Um, and you'll typically see signs out there for that, um, or you can report, report it to um, an election worker as well. Uh, so I really am speeding through this so, so fast. Okay, so what's really important is to be an informed voter. Um, and so you need to know, you, first you need to identify the issues that matter to you. And then you need to research candidates. So we're talking, we're not just talking about federal um, or state, we're also talking about local elections. And um, so make, so research your candidates and find out what they believe in and what they support. And you can do this in, a, in several different ways. Uh, you can do it online um, by looking at their social media. Uh, you can um, attend um, or host even uh, candidate forums. So that's really important for you to be able to ask your questions and get answers back from candidates. Um, attend meet and greets. Um, a lot, some people do um, coffees um, at different coffee shops or at other different things. Just make sure that you uh, are attending those and getting to know your candidates. Um, and also, uh, because we know that we have other things that come up on the ballot that aren't just, um, just people that we're voting for for local office, we also have other uh, laws that are on there. So make sure that you are researching what is on the ballot and how that's going to affect you and how it's going to affect people you care about. I know a lot of times we show up um, and we're like, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't affect me, but it very well and very likely affects other people in your life and that you care about. Um, and so make sure that you are, are researching that. Um, with candidates, you can also send them emails and reach out to them and uh, try to meet with them. I mean, they're probably very busy during um, election season, but I think it's very important that they hear from constituents and hear what is really important in our communities, in our state, and, uh, and in our country. Um, it's important to be heard. Um, so that, uh, 
that is really what I have because we are past when we can register to vote, like the voting registration deadline um, has passed. So um, you can make sure that you are looking up when you have where, like make sure that you are registered and where you are registered and um, and go out there and and research candidate. There's a lot of stuff online that you can look at. I, let me see. Um, I typically, what I do is I just Google my, my candidates. Um, and you can also really closely follow um, local organizations. Um, so uh, if you're attending this, you can, um, you can look at like Project Q&A. They, they can't tell you who to vote for or who they support, but you can see who is engaging um, that might be running for office with, with the organization. Um, and that's the same with a bunch of things like Kansas Appleseed. We can't tell you who to vote. We can't support a candidate, um, but you can see um, who is engaging um, and, and looking through that. So, um, so I'm going to open it up to questions. If that's cool. Uh, do you uh, like Ballotpedia? I, I use that quite a bit for like. Yes, I do like Ballotpedia. Yeah, <laughs> and I use that a lot. I use that pretty regularly. Yeah, uh, I, I uh, last year I worked. Uh, and uh, voter information and like helping to promote uh, a few candidates, um, canvassing door to door, direct voter contact, that sort of thing. Uh, and um, one person just asked me, like, is there just a website I can look at? And I'm like, oh, I, I remember that Ballotpedia. I had to jot it down for them and gave them the information and they looked it up on their phone and they're like, this is actually really helpful. Thank you. So, yes. Yeah. Love and if there's, if there's people that are, um, if there, if you find a candidate that you really support and you really care about, please volunteer for them um, and make, mm -hmm. and do door to door and uh, do canvassing <laughs> and make phone calls. And because mm -hmm. um, that's incredibly important and it is really difficult to find um, volunteers, especially mm -hmm. for local mm -hmm. elections. Yeah, especially for local elections. Like, you know, you'll, Hear all the time about volunteers for you know nationwide stuff, but statewide, local, you don't hear about that as much. Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also and, um, important to run for office. Um, it's I mean, it's true. too late. It's so, true. it's so late. It's late to do it for this election, but it is not too late to start thinking about next, uh, like next year. And yeah, next year, and you know the cycles following, like you know exactly. You can be strategic about it, and you know you have a. If it's just a window that works out for you, it doesn't have to be a career. It doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. Right. It can be something as simple as running for a local office and taking that time and effort, really throwing yourself into the community. And it's scary, it really is. But at the right. same time, it, I think it's a way to give back to our community as well as to our, you know, our society. Really. Right. Like work and in public service like that, even if it's a temporary thing. Yeah, and a lot of people have, um, like, in uh, in a non-Kansas Appleseed setting, whenever I have talked to them personally and said, I think mm -hmm. that you would be an amazing candidate, um, could you, uh, have you thought about running? It's always, well, I don't think that I'm qualified. And if you are passionate about your community, if you're passionate about your state, um, and taking care of um, of our communities, then you absolutely are qualified. Um, I think everyone, I don't think that there is any person that's more qualified than another person. And I, I think that as get like as many that. people to vote or not to vote, to run for office as possible. There's no problem having a bunch of choices when it comes to local yeah, elections. I, uh, like locally here, we often have issues where incumbents stay in office just because there's nobody running against them. And right. I'm not saying I'm not passing judgment on any candidate. Right. I'm just saying we need more options. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And I think that it is really important because then if it's just one person running for office over and over again, then how many voices aren't being heard? Exactly. Um, so and how many how many different communities, like diverse voices? You know, exactly. The concept it, of needing a you know, a chorus of voices to make a song well heard. Like, we need so many different, so many different perspectives in government right now. 
Absolutely. Because, you know, my perspective of things is different than your perspective. And um, I had a conversation with someone where they were, they were questioning um, about questioning something. And I said, there is, I want as many voices at the table as possible. I, there's, absolutely, absolutely. Because we're going to get so many experiences then. There's, when it comes to running for office that you can't have too many cooks in a kitchen, like get all the cooks in there. Oh, yeah. exactly, exactly. Like <laughs> all, everyone's bringing in something different in a different perspective and it's wonderful. And, um, and then that helps voters really see themselves in other candidates and see their values represented. Um, and again, Absolutely. I think, I mean, we're both in Southeast Kansas and I think that we see a lot of people not running for office um, when they would absolutely be wonderful um, because they are very passionate uh, people. I agree with you there. I think that, you know, it, it's it's a near miss with a lot of people. Like they have this passion, they have this uh, heart for service, they have this knowledge of the way the, the world works. And the more voices we get in there, even, young people especially like you hear about like Maxwell Frost for example uh, from Florida the first Gen Zer in Congress um, I think that's an amazing development regardless of where you stand on a lot of issues or which side of the political divide you're at that we get those young people engaged yes absolutely I um I, I think that it is just incredibly important especially like I was saying with Southeast Kansas you know we have um, our region of Kansas is the highest rate of food insecurity in the state. Um, so how do I, we I go... wasn't aware of that, actually. Yeah. Right. So how do we go about fixing this? Like we can give people food, but it is a systemic issue that requires like some systemic change. And how we do that is by running for office and voting for people because I mean, food insecurity is on the ballot and people care about these uh, about these issues. And it's, mm -hmm. once you know about it, you you know that you can change it. Like food pantries are amazing. And there's so many, so many people in Southeast Kansas and across the state that are doing amazing work to fight food insecurity. And I don't want to negate any of that because they are they are doing just fantastic, amazing, hard, um, heart wrenching work. Um, but we do need to also change policies and expand like SNAP access and look at child nutrition programs yeah. and how we can expand Absolutely. that. So, and mm -hmm. all of that it can be done with voting and yeah. by running for office. Uh, there, there's a phrase that a local activist uh, here often says, bad politicians stay in power because of those who don't vote. It, it really yep. is that simple because good voters aren't voting. They're not voting in the people that really could make a huge difference with a lot of issues, food insecurity, um, medical care, a, a lot of issues, so many yep. issues that could just be solved by people coming out in droves for the vote, putting people into those positions of responsibility and authority who will ultimately make the right choices for their communities. Absolutely. And we know that Kansans will turn out when there's something on the ballot that they deeply care about. We saw that last year with the primary. Kansans yes, <laughs> showed up in record numbers. No matter what side of that you were on, people showed up and it was overwhelming and amazing. Um, and so we know it, we know that history as well. Like I right. my, I was uh, I was on a holiday in Minnesota visiting a couple of friends and uh, the vote came in and my best friend says, Cody, have you seen the news? I said, the news. She's like, your state made the news. And I'm like, what happened? And I look like the first page uh, mm -hmm. on my uh, news search results. I mean, not search results, but rather my news uh, tab that I had open uh, talked about the that vote. And I'm like, oh, fine. We, we really did make national news and history with this one. <laughs> yeah. Just so when Kansans care, we show up and we... There's there's always something on the ballot that we should be caring about. Our candidates are 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 our essentially, for lack of a better term, our hired employees. Like or they're representing us and our ideals. So that is very important. And um, because 
no one wants people speaking for them and saying things that they would never say. So, um, so making sure that you, the person that's speaking for you is actually saying what you believe in is important. And Absolutely. Right. Voting yeah. matters. Yeah, and that's, that's why voting from a place of informed, responsible, like knowing about your candidates, knowing where to stand on different matters. Like that's so critical, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make one more sweep to check for questions. I haven't seen any yet, but uh, okay. some have popped up since the last time I checked. So far, no, um, but uh, we will be uh, here in about five minutes. I'm gonna close down the live stream so that if anyone wants to show up in the Zoom call, they can uh, read you directly, have any questions, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I could I will also plug while I'm here on things that I I think mm -hmm. that are very important. So Absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, so one of the programs that I've been working, so I also focus very heavily on child nutrition programs. And so the child nutrition program that's going on right now is the summer food service program um, that is a national program and um, and across the state, there are amazing, amazing people running these uh, programs. Now they end, most of them end uh, Friday of next week, but it is incredibly important to utilize them. All meals are, are free to kids ages one to 18. Um, you'll have to check uh, what there's different requirements. So like I am in Iola and we have a site where it is a congregate only site. So kids, when they attend, um, they have to, they have to stay on site to eat their meal. Um, but that we also, because we're a rural area, um, like most of Southeast Kansas is, um, there are, and frankly, most of Kansas is there, uh, there are non-congregate options as well. So like we have, uh, we have a bus where we can go and you can pick up meals, uh, through there. Um, some, the rules are different. Like some places, children don't need to be present. You just need to have filled out a form. Sometimes children do need to be present. Um, it just, it depends on the site, um, and the people running that on what their policies are, but, we want to make sure that they are utilized so that we continue to have these programs that feed children um, every summer because the, yeah. you don't have those meals like you do during the school year. Absolutely, yes. And, you know, the, I think it's critically important that we get that foot traffic going because if there is a need, it will continue. Right. And, like, it, I know that when I first saw it, when I was, uh, like, before I ever worked in this space, um, I would see the signs that said that. And I was like, well, probably there's an income requirement or like some sort of guideline on here. Um, and it's probably not a space for me. So I wouldn't go there. And um, it absolutely, it is free for all kids ages one to 18. They're not asking for income. They're not, all they are most likely asking is to see the children to give them food. Like, um, yeah. So it's important. I I utilized it today for my three kids. So we use it every chance that we are able to. Um, and it is a lifesaver for so, so many people. Absolutely. Completely vital service to, you know, to be out there helping these children. I appreciate you plugging uh, that, uh, to promote that. Thank you so much. Thank you to all who tuned in and our partners at the Independence Public Library and our funding sources, the Independence Area Community Trust and the American Library Association. Thank you to Paige Olson for a wonderful presentation. If you would like to continue the conversation with Paige on Zoom, follow the link in the comments. Be sure to tune in next month for Q&A Talks. We'll be holding a panelist discussion on Wednesday, August 16th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we will be deep we will be discussing Gender Diversity 101. If you would like to find out more about Project q &A, our work, or to view past q a talks, visit our website and follow us on social media. To support the work we are doing in rural communities, please consider making a tax-deductible donation today. Thank you for watching our Q&A talk this month. If you have any questions for our presenter, follow the link in the comments, please. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening.